There was a storefront show on Madison Avenue called Adas Yisrael. And there was a handful of people who lived in the area, mostly older men. And Rabbi Tights, that's Pinchas Tights, felt that the Jewish community was expanding and therefore it would expand, he felt, toward North Avenue, toward North Elizabeth, and therefore he wanted to put up a, what shall we say, a neighborhood synagogue for the, in the North Avenue uh, area. And so he built the show in 1955. There was a need. So the rabbi decided that we're going to build a shoe there, a shoe in on, on North Avenue. And that's how it started. My father also realized he couldn't have two shoes in the area. So he spoke to the ones who were running Adas Israel and negotiated a merger. They joined with the understanding that their gabayim would be the gabayim of the show, and uh, they would get a discount on membership for life, and they would join in. The need was there to support, and we were in the business already. You know, I was with my pals in the business. So we had built, you know, whatever was needed was there, you know. We had a lot of people that were uh, survivors of the Holocaust. And we were all survivors. We were all the assignment, actually, you know, because we had nobody. I mean, I was married, you know, but we, you understand, we needed this, we needed this, 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 this life that we had in Krakow, you know, that we had before the war. It grew when Newark went out of business, as far as Jews were concerned. The section of Newark closest to Elizabeth is the weak wake section, which went from 95% Jewish to 95% other in three years. When I moved here, maybe half the people who came to the shul spoke English with accents. They weren't native born. There were a lot of immigrants came here. We spoke Yiddish, sure. We spoke Yiddish, sure. And a lot of them came here for the reason that the young people came here. They wanted their children to have a Jewish education, and we were the few municipalities that had a Jewish day school. I was interested in having a Jewish community, and also what was very important for me was that there would be an educational uh, center for my children. You always knew who the major, major contributors were to the shul. There was my uncle Jesse Weisberg. There was Mori Pantira. By the name of Kelson, who was a butcher in town. The two Wilf brothers. Mr. Seftel. Mr. Epstein. The were the Katzes. Mr. Ustendik. Sam Alton. Milton Levy. Ed Blick. Goldbergs. Alex Gottiner. Nathan and Lily Wafsi. Was Isaac Levenstein. Of course, Mr. Farkas has to be mentioned. Mr. Farkas, he was the one who would summon. He was the Gabai and the leader. More Rubin, Renee Rubin's husband who came here in 69, I believe it was, from Washington. He was the original director of Bnei Brith. And he became the Balmusif. The Galuskis and the Stitches. There's Neil Hoffman, Olaf Hashan. The Zuckermans. <coughs> Margie Budden, of course. Mr. Horowitz. Nate Kurtzer. Chris Sells. It was Mr. Eilenberg. Charlie Neustein. The Bulgars. And Josh Weisberger. So Weiss moved. Showman. We had a man who used to walk in from the projects from Newark, 94 years old. Walked in every day, a mile and a half, a mile and a half back, didn't take a ride. For a family, there was a family called Frankel, a family, the Walzer family. Much fewer, the Shanzers, Marvin, of course, Yitz Tobin. Stu Warner, and let me include the wives as well. In later years, there was a younger crowd that got involved in creating activities. We would have musicals for Lagba Omer. We would have uh, Onik Shabbos on Friday night when the Shabbos would start early. Everybody was included because it was one community. Perak on the lawn started. There was a sisterhood and the sisterhood had uh, dinners separate from the main JC dinners. The memories of Simchas Torah were quite, were quite funny. One Simchas Torah uh, when I started to take out the Sifre Torah out of the ark, he had apparently come to shul early and removed them all. And when they went to open it, there was Jerry Tarlo sitting in the, with the Torah saw. One of the big things was uh, mixing up the box of cards, the Aaliyah cards, 
uh, in Simchas Torah, shuffle the cards. And then there was a time when somebody was hearing they must put water into the Kahanim's shoes when they went up to Duchen. He filled the shoes with water and was chased around the, uh, the shul uh, vehemently. There were many people that were laughing and thought it was funny, but uh, there were a few people that didn't think it was very funny. Tying of taluses together, you know, which the kids used to do. You would have somebody that would be davening for the Amid, uh, Musaf time, and the cry of Hecher, which means higher, higher, louder. But the Yisrael did; they picked them up higher. But other people in the congregation decided to lift the chazan up to greater heights. Dr. Shenzer dressed up like a rebbe, and he got up. And he was known as the Shenzer Rebbe. Most of the time, with the shtaimer in the bekesha, and he would come and he would speak to our shul. It's Tommy was a shamus. Ruth Tobin, in his inimitable way, got up and translated from the Yiddish into a foreign language called English. And the translation he gave of what he was saying was hilarious. What Irv was translating had nothing to do with the Yiddish that Dr. Shanzer was expressing. And he started to speak in Yiddish and I translated. Well, I'm not a comedian, but apparently that time I must have been funny. When I was growing up, we really didn't have that much around. There weren't a lot of JEC kids living in the neighborhood. It was meager, as I remember. I mean, there was just a dearth of young people. In the subsequent years, uh, what would happen, young people would come, they would stay, they would live in the apartments, they would have one child, two children, and they would move. The children started moving to their own communities, the older people started moving to where their children were. We tried. We put ads in paper, in newspapers. We tried chapatones. We did everything to try to draw people and to have them stay, but it didn't work until recently. The main change has been in the last five years. When the young people moved in, first a trickle, and then once it became a critical mess. With the advent of Rabbi Schwartz, there's really been a change and a lot of young people came in and then you developed a critical mass. The recent growth is, is uh, in very large measure attributable to Rabbi Schwartz, of course. It isn't until the last, I would say, five, six, seven years that we have this wonderful influx of young people. The, the difference is they, they're all young people. Old young people and somehow the old timers are not there anymore. Life, that's life. You know, that's the way it goes. And there's been a great amount of participation by the people that have moved in and giving shiurim and having chaburot, where we learn together. It's very heartwarming. It's very heartwarming. What we wanted to accomplish has happened. But this pretty much was what my father had anticipated when he built it to begin with. I mean, he had prepared the, the groundwork for it to be able to go. Had the shul not been there, then Orthodox people would not have moved in. Now you have a vibrant young congregation. I mean, I, my emails are constantly, this one is having a baby and that one is having a baby. This is fantastic. Now, the kids galore and it, it's great, you know, playing and learning and, uh, you know, great camaraderie. And when I look at the mobs, at the big number of little children around and almost every week announcing a birth, it makes me very happy. This is like a living organism. I mean, it's like a heart, and it keeps pumping, and the blood keeps flowing, and these new people keep coming in, these new, young, wonderful people. It is, it's fabulous. It really is. It's, uh, um, it's like, it's almost a revolution. There'll be a revolution like that now. No, no. There was a time it was, you know, uh, but uh, we knew that a shoe, a shoe never goes under. There's no, we wouldn't let it go under anyway, you know. We wouldn't let it go under. And I think we're well on our way to uh, growing even further. This is the greatest feeling, just to say. We had the heart in it. That was it. We had the heart in it. And we, we wanted to succeed it and we wanted to, you know, we wanted the children to educate. And we really brought this, this Yiddish guy to, to America.